know why they are here. You are here because you know what you are doing here. How many don't know why you are here? You so see you as a new prayer that you put hand is. You are not sure. Amen. Because if in the house of your father you are not free and you cannot speak to him, you've got a problem. And we're going to sort that out today. Amen. If you are in the house of God and you can't talk to your father, there's something wrong. Amen. 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 Now I know that a lot of people have been going through so many things. But for me, when I'm in the presence of God, when I'm, I'm amongst believers, my fellow workmen, it is an opportunity I never want to let out. It's a moment to talk to God. It is a moment to deliver into the hands of God what is upon my heart. Am I speaking to some people? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to rise your feet and just talk to God for a moment and say, Father, whatever I've gone through in the course of this week, you know. And at this point in time, I just want to lift up my issues, my failures, the things that I've gone through, the challenges that I've had into your hands and I'm asking that Lord may you give me wisdom may you give me a way forward may you give me an idea out of the issue that I'm facing so open your mouth and begin to pray in that direction just begin to pray in that direction just talk to God in the name of Jesus address your prayer to God address your prayer to God in the mighty name of Jesus begin to talk to him begin to talk to him Father, whatever I have gone through in the course of the week, Lord, this is an hour, this is a moment uh, when I want to speak to you, when I want to deliver my heart filled issues. Uh, and this is when I want to make a firm demand uh, upon all that I require, all that I need. Uh, my Father, my Maker, my Redeemer, my Savior, may you be the God that hears my prayer. May you be God that answers my fire. May you be God that answers uh, by all my needs, I you God, supply all my needs, supply all my needs, according to your riches in glory, begin to supply all my needs, according to your riches, according to your riches, in glory. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Last week we said that prayer is calling forth the things that are not as though they are. Yes. Am I correct? Amen. 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 Prayer is calling forth things that are not as though they are. Because something is missing. Amen. I want you for this moment to just begin to pray over the things that you don't have. Prayer is asking. Remember, prayer is asking. Don't waste time telling God where you've been and what has happened. What you haven't done. Ask him for the things that you need. Because the Bible says whatsoever things you need, ask the Father in the name of Jesus and you will receive. Amen. And if you receive, don't wait for manifestation. Receive there and there. So we're going to pray in these few minutes for the things that are not there. The things that are missing in your life. The things that you want to have that you don't have. Amen. And you're going to call them forth because prayer is calling forth things that are not there as though they are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I talking to some people? Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and just begin to ask God for things. Anything that is upon your heart, begin to ask God. Begin to ask God. Begin to ask God. Begin to speak to Him in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever thing is missing in the lives of your people right now, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that Lord Jehovah, mighty God, may you begin to supply the need of that man, begin to, uh, to supply the need of every woman in this place, begin to supply the need of every child, oh God, that is standing in the congregation of the wise this morning. Father, people are missing financial breakthrough, they are missing connections, oh God, they are missing good health, oh Lord Jehovah, just a small link into what they require, what they are looking for, what they need. And so Lord Jesus, we call forth things that are missing, things that are not there. We call for good health. We call for the God, financial sense. We call for mighty God, wisdom in people. We call for mighty God, the connection that is required, that is needed of your son, of your people. In the Jesus, that those that are missing jobs, let there be a supplier 
seed according to the desire that is upon their heart, according to that which they are crying for, according to that which is deep in their heart. In the precious name of Jesus, let no man of God come out of here without their needs supplied. Lord, we receive because we have asked you. We receive because you are the provider. We receive because you give us. We receive because you grant us. In the mighty and awesome name of our Lord Jesus, the I am that I am. We call all these things manifest spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. As every saint says, Amen and Amen. Give God a mighty praise of me now. Ah, you can do better. You can do better. That praise of yours requires an anointing. You can do better. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to just greet your neighbor this morning. Maybe you just walked in and you don't know how they are. Just take a moment and say, neighbor, you're welcome in the house of God. You are a blessing to me. It is good to see you here. But, but smiling, they call you a neighbor. We don't know where they are coming from. Ah, I'll stay clear. I'll move to that one Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to just lift our birthrights in these hearts. I, I love people that are proud of their birthright. You are proud of your birthright. You may never enter the presence of the congregation of the wives without your birthright in the house. Glory be to God. How many are carrying your birthright? Lift up your birthright. Lift it high. You don't know who you are if you don't have your birthright. And I'm not talking about your birthright on phone. That is your phone. That is your phone. Please help the person that doesn't have a birthright. Tell them it is illegal to be in the presence of God without a written document. Who are you? Ask them, who are you? It is illegal. This is my right. <laughs> Listen, this declares to me I am a legal dog, child of God. Tell your neighbor that doesn't have, I have a right. It is written, the right of a in paper, in print, it is my birthright. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody lift up your birthright and say the word of God. Is my birthright. It is my nature. I am born of God. I'm born of his word. The word of God is my right. It's my birthright. It's my nature. I can do whatever the word of God says I can do. I am whatever the word of God says I am. In Jesus' mighty name, my life is never the same because I know what is written about me. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Open that birthright to the book of James before you see it. Before you see it. Please, those that are sitting down, I'll ask you to stand. We are reading the word of God. We are reading the word of God from the book of James. The book of James. The book of James, chapter number one. James, chapter number one. Verse number five only. Amen. Verse number five only. Uh, are we there, James? Okay. Without the instruments, your own, thank you. I want us to read this word carefully. Are we together? Can we read? The Bible reads, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Let's jump to James 5.
number 5, verse 16. The Bible reads, Confess your trespass to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective, right, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. Amen. And the Lord bless the reading of the word. Ask your neighbor, are you a righteous man? Are you a righteous man? You may be seated in the house of God. What did the neighbor answer you? Is there, are there a right? Is that neighbor a righteous man? <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. How many of your neighbors are righteous? Amen. The Bible says the prayer of the righteous man, it availed much. Now, today I want to tackle the, the topic I titled, A Harvest of Answers. Amen. A Harvest of Answered Prayer. A Harvest of Answered Prayer. I've been dealing with topics on prayer for the past few weeks and I've been talking to you as a congregation concerning prayer and I've been teaching step by step and I've been opening the books and opening the scriptures and not just quoting these scriptures because scripture is not to be quoted but scripture is to be explained. Amen. So we do not read scripture because we want to quote it but we read it because we need to understand it and so it must be explained. And over the weeks I've been talking to you about prayer. I've dealt with all angles of prayer. The prayer is taught. Prayer is an example. Prayer is a lifestyle. We touch issues of worship. Worship is not a song. It's more than a song. Worship is an attitude that one develops from the very moment that they understand who they are. And they understand their calling. They understand the call of God upon their lives. It becomes an attitude. The very minute that you begin to think in the course of the week, this week, no matter what happens, whether I am sick, whether I have, whether I don't have, whether I'm insulted, no matter what happens, this week I am going to church. That's an attitude of worship. If you decide whatever meeting the church calls, I will be there. That's an act of worship. And so worship is not because you have lifted your hand and you are singing and you love the music and you come into the church and you say, oh, I don't like the way the church the choir sings. Listen, we're not here to entertain you. Worship is more than a song. It's the attitude of prayer. It's an attitude of worship. It's an attitude that one develops to take aside their usual program and just sit in the congregation amongst others, congregate with others. That is worship. Praise is not clapping and dancing. Praise is you acknowledging and realizing giving a value to the things that God has done for you. And in praise, you can never do it quietly. Amen. You have to tell God, tell the world, this is what God has done for me. I am who I am because of what God has done for me. I've got what I've got because God has taken me from point A to point B. Amen. Am I speaking to some people? So I've taken you from place to place for you to understand. Amen. We've dealt with prayer as a giving attitude. We are the offering in the house of God. We don't come here to present only paper in form of money and think we are giving God something. God is not waiting for the paper. He is waiting for you as the offering in the house of God. Amen. That is why it's an act of worship. When you tell yourself, I'm taking myself to God in Latero, in service. Amen. And so we've spoken about these things and I pray that People have been grasping and people have been understanding. And so when you are in the house of God, if you are standing and we are saying pray and you are looking the other way, your attitude tells us you are not in worship. Amen. We are telling you, can we rise and do something together? And you are in your own world. Your attitude tells us your body is here but your mind is somewhere else. If we, the congregation is reading the scriptures and you're busy flipping your phone to Facebook and anything else, you are not in worship, you are doing something else. Why don't you just go home or do something else? Because you are not cheating anybody, you are cheating yourself. It's an attitude you develop. Amen. I'm tired of 
cranking Christians because this is where we have a lot of believers backsliding because they don't know why they come to church. They don't know why they actually congregate. They don't know who even they worship. Amen. You only see believers really get serious with God when they've got a pressing issue. And God is not a magician that comes just to heal and you, when you collect, you go away. He's a lifestyle. Tell your neighbor, God is a lifestyle. Amen. We spoke about supplication last week. I'm going to recap just a little bit on supplication. And I was talking to you about Paul's epistles and how he wrote to us about supplication. And we did an exercise last week, beautiful exercise. Amen. 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 And we spoke about prayer as being supplication. Am I correct? How many remember? What scripture did we read from? Ephesians chapter number 6. Eh? Yes. And we say that there was a, a, a few repetitions that God made in that scripture. And he was talking to us about so many things. And so we need to be very, very careful when we are looking at scriptures. And we say supplication is the same word that means to make a firm this demand. It is the word decease. Amen. Decease. Amen. It means to make a firm demand, to ask and make a firm demand, to entreat. Amen. To make a fixed request, a committed request, and stay with the request. Amen. So we spoke about a few things last week, and we said that prayer is to be addressed to who? Hello? Many of us that pray, why our prayer is not answered, is that we address the prayer to the wrong person. Hello? We address our prayers to the wrong person. And we spoke last week, we said that when we pray, we start our prayers with Jesus, then repetition. Jesus, you know what I've gone through. My enemies have encamped around me. Lord Jesus, I don't know why they want to kill me. There are so many here. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And we keep talking, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we spoke that supplication last week is asking God for something. And Jesus taught us from the book of John, chapter number 16. He says, from this moment forward, you will ask me for nothing. So when we address our prayers to Jesus, we are in error. Amen. <laughs> Bible, very clear, but very complicated if you don't read it with the right context. Amen. Many of us address our prayers to Jesus. Amen. We tell Jesus what we want, and yet the book of John, chapter number 16, verse 23 and 24, Jesus spoke to us and says, I will tell you now that anything you will ask, the Father, ask the Jesus said it and he taught us 
And because we don't read the scriptures, we just quote scriptures to suit us, especially Pentecostals. We love to quote scripture, which we don't understand. Scripture is not to be quoted, it's to be understood. It's supposed to be explained. It's supposed to be broken down in order for you to understand what you are reading. That is why there is a book written, do you understand what you are reading? Understand it thou, what thou readest. Amen. And so today we are tackling issues that have to do with answered prayer. The biggest problem a believer has is prayer answered. Hello, somebody. Everybody wants an answered prayer. Everybody seeks answer to prayer. But very few ever attend the answered prayer. And so today I'm talking to you about a harvest of prayer. And I'm beginning my teaching from the book of James, chapter number 1, and verse 5. And James, James tells us very, very, very important information. Is there any amongst you that lacks wisdom? Let him ask the Father. And the Father gives liberally to all who ask. Amen. The Father gives liberally to all those who ask. Amen. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. I want to make you understand what James was talking about in that scripture in verse 5. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask the Father, who gives all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given unto him. When God says he will give to you liberally, God gives openly. God gives without even favor. God never changes his method of giving. God never substitutes anything that you ask for. If you are going to ask God for money, God will give you money. If you are going to ask God for a wife, God will not give you a knife in return. He will give you what you are looking for. Amen. He gives according to the request. Hallelujah. Have I got people in the house? He gives you according to what you are asking. And so God is, give, is a giver. He gives liberally to all who ask. And he has no reproach to it. Amen. He adds nothing to it. Amen. If any lacks, let him ask. And God gives without a reproach. It means that God doesn't find fault with, it, with giving you what you are looking for. Amen. If I was God and you came to me and you said, ma, ma, God, I want money to go and buy a Benz. And this is Ngula, likely. She's in school. I want to buy a Benz. Me, as a human being, I'll look at Ngula and say, you, Benz yacha. Going where? Ufuna uvute manche. Sisa kuona pa nupanyu. Yeku kondoka kwa kongula. This and that. Because I am not God. Hello? <laughs> but God is a father. He is a generous God. He will not begin to judge or find fault with why Ngula wants the Benz. At the time when she really needs to be in school. God would just say, oh, probably Ngula needs the bands for her to get to one place and the other. So I'll give Ngula this bands, but I'll also put a guard on Ngula so that she does not fall. Amen. Amen. Just like a good father will always provide transport for their child to get to and from, so is God. God's nature is to give. God's nature is to provide. God's nature is to find someone faultless. No matter what you are asking God for, he does not impute fault to anything that you are going to ask him. It is his nature to be faultless. Amen. It is his nature to give generously. It is his nature to make sure he provides for you. Tell your neighbor, it's his nature to give me, to provide for me. Without finding fault. Amen. I hope you are understanding me. Now, the question may arise. If God gives openly, generously, without finding fault, why then must I ask? Amen. Why should I ask him if he gives just like that? He knows already. Matthew chapter number 6. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew chapter number 6 and verse 8. Matthew 
number six, eight. Before I even go there, I know what it's saying. It's talking to us about God knowing all the things that we need. We, before we even open our mouths to ask, before we even tell God what we need, God already knows. So why should we ask him? Can somebody tell me? Chapter 6, I'm going to say. Amen. Matthew chapter number 6, verse 8. The Bible says, Therefore, do not be like do not like do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have you have need of before you ask him. The father knows all the things you have need of before you even ask him. So if God knows before you even ask him, why do we ask? In chapter number seven and verse seven, he says, "Ask and it will be given; seek and it, you will find; knock and the door will be open." Amen. Yet, in verse 8, he says to you, I know, before you even speak, of all the things that you want. I am I'm already in the know. Amen. So why should we ask God? Does anybody have an idea why we should ask God? Yes, sir. Why do we ask? Um, we ask so as to confirm from our heart that we need it from you. Amen. We already know everything. Amen. Amen. We pray to ask God for things because God has commanded that we should ask. Amen. It's like you in your house. You have rules. Amen. You have rules in your house. And your children cannot just get things from the fridge just because they are your children. You know they need to eat. You know they need things. But they will need to ask. You also know they need transport money. You know they need... You need, they need money for different things. But do they just come into your wallet and because you are dad and because you know and they collect? Hello? You, they have to ask, isn't it? And so God says to us, we need to ask him for the things that we need. Amen. So prayer is not informing God of the things that we don't have. Amen. Prayer is not informing